All right, welcome back to part two, everybody. Where we yesterday we did part one. Check the video in the description. We went through all the dual lands. We talked about condition and signatures. Um, we went through some of these other ones. How I discussed with you guys about pricing on certain lower end cards that are not. You know, you have to make sure that the price is in the right range when you adjust for fees and internet. I talked to you guys about pretty much a library I couldn't buy because it was inked. Now today. We're going to go into a little bit of other things. We talked about the Lotus. We talked about the uh, the Italian moat. Remember, when Italian versus English, make sure you adjust for value. They are nowhere near the same value. That was an English gem mint moat. It'd be worth double. So, little things I told you guys about. Like I so said, we even have a, a beta 9 balance. Nice little thing signed by the old Mark Poole. Dr. Mark Poole on the case. Not too bad. A few other little things. Like I said, we went over the... Um, be very careful buying grades that are below 9 because of the fact that you know, this is saying, you know, near mint plus. Are you kidding me? You know, we talked about this. There's no way. I mean, that's that's played. That's literally light played and, you know, excellent condition depending what terminology you want to use. Then you've got other ones like this Alpha Time Volt, which is an 8.5, but it actually just has, you know, pretty much it has the subgrades are stronger. To the eye, it looks a lot nicer. It has a, it doesn't have a lot of nicks all over the edge on that black border. It looks a lot nicer. You can still look close. There's still some tiny little marks. But it's nowhere, it looks a lot more appealing to the eye. And quite frankly, Beta Demonic Hordes, I just like the card. And again, it's a strong 9. I mean, you've got all subgrades of, oh, hold on. You've got all subgrades at 9, and you got 195. There's no 8-5 subgrades. It's, it's overall a strong 9, as they say. Like I said, when you get into these other little things I want to bring up, you know, the only Collector's Edition cards we have are a Volcanic Island and a Soul Ring. Remember Collector's Edition? Gold back. Square corners, very sensitive cards to keep in mint condition. And then again, another little comment for everybody. I've seen it before, and I've seen people say, Oh, Rudy, I've got a summer edition Taiga. I was like, are you sure? Because that just looks like it's um, German? French? I'm like, just because it's not English doesn't mean it's summer. Anyways, so be aware of that. Obviously, foreign white bordered, foreign black bordered. Some people call it FBB, FWB. Am I allowed to use that terminology? It feels inappropriate. Other little things. When you talk about like Wasteland, for example, this is a non-reserved list card. Wastelands have taken a huge hit in value. Must be very careful when buying cards like this. You know, about a two years ago in 2015-ish, these were pushing 100 to 110 a piece on eBay. With the reprint in Eternal Masters and being non-reserved list, these are selling on eBay now for like 30 bucks. So, you know, if he, and I'm probably not going to be able to buy these again, just like the old snappies over there, because of the fact that he's not going to be happy if I say, hey, I'll give you 15, 20 bucks a car. He's going to be like, what? So chances are things like that are not going to work out. And that's cool. It's not the buyer or the seller's fault. It's just, you know, there's different valuations and perceptions and perspectives of how people look at cards. So besides the fact that they're real and they're in great condition, you know, there are kind of really good cards out there that just don't have the value anymore. And you must be aware of that. Force of Will. It's been reprinted so many times. There was a time these were pushing 100 a piece on eBay, and now they're probably down 25%. You can probably get these in 70s and 80s. I wouldn't be surprised they're in the 60s now. You know, and that's a very big deal. Then you have other cards like the old Icy Manipulator. Not a reserved list card. It was an Ice Age, and it had, a, it had some reprints. I think, I don't know if there's any promos of it, but the fact is, the matter... You know, it's a nostalgia black bordered original artwork. There's different, you know, the fact that Ice Age had a different artwork, that does affect value. There are a lot of people that like black bordered originals. This one, again, is signed. So, again, it's going to be tough for me to find a buyer for, you know, a non-mint condition signed beta one. So, this is going to be something that's going to take a long time to move. You have to factor that in when you're trying to buy cards like that. So, show and tell from Urza Saga. Another heavy hitter. Reprint in Conspiracy 2. Beat the living crap out of the old card price. you got to be real careful with cards like that. Same thing when you deal with this. We had an original Zendikar with these blood, the blood gas, guys, I, I can never pronounce that. i got an issue with it. They're all signed, which means i got a lower market share. In addition to that, this is not reserved list. With all the master sets and how much Wizards wants to reprint everything to make money, the odds are that's going to get hit on the reprint and it's going to go down. I must be very cautious on cards like that. Same thing with Underworld Dreams, with Master Sets and Master's 25th Anniversary. Ugh, I can't talk. Master 25th Anniversary, Iconic. These are the type of cards that can get hit, and you will take a bath. You must be very careful. Again, Foil Fetch, MM 2017. You know, it's like currency. No problem. I'm going to sell that. I can sell that pretty easily. Uh, original. I believe these are Original Onslaught duels. All signed. That's uh, Zendikar over there. Original Zendikar, not Battle for Zen. 
Um, all signed. Usually there's a good market. Dual lands, fetch lands, these type of things. It's like liquid currency. Usually you aren't going to have too difficult of a time selling them. The signatures may make the market share slightly lower, but overall, you know, I'll try to sell them as a play set. Shouldn't be a problem. And again, little cards like uh, the old Manavolt. Manavolt, but anyways. You know, I think these are up to like 13 14 bucks, even in revised, even when they're not in mint condition. I mean, people just like them. It's a staple card. You know, EDH, Commander, Old Format, Vintage, blah, blah, blah. So whatever. So Natural Order, similar thing. A very cool card. I believe it's Original Portal, not Three Kingdoms or Second Age. This is Original Portal. Gentleman even has an actual graded one up here. I guess he was a big fan of the card. Graded, it looks like a solid 9. Look at that, two subgrades at 9.5 with the other two at 9. No 8.5 subgrade. It's a solid 9. So, and then again, you even got some other little stuff. Like I told you, you got a wall of wood and you got a flipping, you know, the old monolith. I mean, again, it's a PSA 8. Um, well, it's a pretty nice looking PSA 8. It's probably got a surface ding or something. But, and again, the uh, monolith is one of those cards that had the really dark printing from beta. It's like Icy Manipulator, where when you put it next to the other cards, it's real dark comparatively. So, I want to jump back over. Uh, we went through this box yesterday, and uh, I just wanted you guys to take a look to give you an idea what's in another one of these boxes. Because, again, these boxes are going to be very difficult for me to negotiate on because he's probably I can't offer the same higher rate. I mean, these are great cards. These are staples, man. Signed Goblin Grenades. Look at these things. And Energy Flow. Look at these things. There's a From the Vault sign. Look at how many signed cards. Abrupt Decays. These are all decent cards. None of these are garbage five-cent cards. The problem is... When they're lower value, I can't offer the same price per dollar. My offer goes from like 60, 70 cents on the dollar to like 40, 50 cents, sometimes lower. Because if this sells for 99 cents on eBay, even if I sell it on eBay, I'm going to make five cents after fees, that kind of thing. So, you know, even if it's worth a dollar, I got to offer 10 cents on the dollar. And that's where you run, in, look at that cool signature. So that's where you run into a lot of those weird things. And some cards like this, look, original Smash to, Smash to Smithereens, that's the original printing years ago, was that 09, 08? Before they reprinted in Origins and the other sets. You know, Master of the Hunt, same thing. Legend signed. You got a lot of these. Look, Beta Sorcerer. And then you got Ice Age Dark Rituals. Look at this. Arc Bomb, the old Ravenger. Look at that guy. Fire and Ice. You got a lot. Cryptic Command. Look at that dude. Rawr. You know, you got all kinds of stuff. Foil uh, from Beyond, Battle for Zen. You got a Beta Channel. Stroke of Genius. Look at that signature. Whoa. Look at that. Frantic Search from Legacy. Foiled, signed, everything. You got a Foreign. Was it Wrath of God? You got all kinds of crap here. And again, these are not bad cards. They're good. But the problem when you deal with a larger bulk type of stuff like this is the offer is usually going to be a lot lower. And it's usually a lot more difficult to try to get a deal. Look at these things. Mutavolts, Reflect. I mean, these are great cards. I mean, they are worth money. But again, they're only going to be useful for a buyer, a store, or any online dealer if the pricing is good. You have to make it worth your while. You're talking a very, very large chunk of labor in a long period of time to move this type of a product. Look at that. You got some beta common forest right there. Another sorcerer sign. You got some temples. You got then you got all kinds of different lands. Horn agreed. Uh, reprint from Commander or Conspiracy Two. So I mean, you've got a lot of cards that are good cards, but like I've, I've been telling you guys over and over, I just don't. You know, I, I, it makes me nervous to know whether I'm going to buy. I have no problem buying the big stuff, but the smaller stuff like this is going to be very, very challenging because this is all this stuff put together is going to be worth a couple grand. Look at that tutor in there. But the thing is. Look, is that birthing pods? It's a foil birthing pod. You know, command towers. You got, man, you got a lot of staples. Holy cow. Talk about a commander player's dream, right? Oh, <laughs> the troll. You already know him. So, again, I can go on and on showing you guys this stuff. Like I said, I'm just trying to show you and prove the point of, you know, some of these. Look, the Torax, Fallen Empires. Not heavy hitters, but they're cool cards. Sign cards. Look at this stuff. All kinds. Future sites. Craziness. Craziness. My God, there's so much stuff. Old, new, look at the laboratory, all kind. look at this, original legends all signed. I mean, just a crazy collection, you guys. This collection's insane. I mean, just, God. So, that's pretty much the second box. Again, very similar to the first one. A bunch of wild cards, a bunch of exotic things. You know, a lot of signed cards. My God. Holy crap, look at all the frogs. You know, and sometimes it looks like he speculated on frogs. You know, it happens. Looks like all gold. God, they're all signed. Holy smokes, that's a lot of signed cards. So, you know, up oh, null rods. Look at those null rods. Look at all the null rods. So, a lot of cool stuff. Like I said, I don't have my confidence up that I'm going to be able to really kind of agree and make him happy on something like this. But, you know, it's just, I just want to share what it is so you guys can at least glance through it all and see what I'm seeing. I mean, the variety of old and new is pretty incredible. I mean, look at, oh my God, look at those. Jesus. Whoa. So, 
<laughs> the thorn. Did you just get restricted or banned or something? So you get the idea. A bunch of stuff like that. That's the second one I wanted to go over. So I'm going to go back to the main thing here before we kind of end this video today. Another, Like I said, this is probably going to be a one to two hour total video. The next chunk I wanted to go into is I want to get into the big power stuff now. So we're going to start off. Um, I'm thinking maybe the unlimited stuff. So after we verified they're authentic, the things you need to be concerned with, like I said, on the white bordered cards, yellowing is the first thing I go for. You got to verify the yellowing. These look pretty nice. The next thing you got to look at is the wear on the edges. All of these have play wear. We are not looking at any actual mint unplayed power cards. That is a big swing in price when you deal with power. Like, you know, I cannot pay a near mint price on this when it's got worn edges. So, for example, let's put this bad boy down here. You know, and if we look at this kind of card, I mean, white border cards show the wear really quick and easy. And again, these are very, very obviously real cards. We've already gone through the verification and everything. So if you look at these bad boys, you know, I mean, the surface looks nice. You can see the dings and dents. You've got, look at the play wear on it. There's no inking at least, but I mean, look at the back. Look at the surface. It's pretty rough. I mean, these are nowhere near unplayed near mint cards. So that's something that you need to keep that in mind. You need to bid and offer a very realistic price. Um, when you're dealing with a buyer and if you, if they want, let's say they want like 1500 for this and you're like, no way. I'm at like half that price. And if they're like, what? And they get upset with it, just tell them, you know, no big deal, no hard feelings. Some buyers are cool with it. Some have a very difficult time kind of swallowing that pill. Giggity. I haven't done a giggity in a while. So, for example, the next we have two emeralds. Um, I'm going to take these out of the cases so you guys can check this out with me. And we can talk about this. Uh oh, I almost lost the camera. You guys still with me? Sorry. Totally hit the camera. All right. So, next we're going to go through these. I want to take them out. And I want you guys to look at both of these with me. So, do you notice the first thing? The emerald on top is yellowing. Look how the white, the tone of the white difference is noticeable in person. I don't know if it's noticeable in the camera. But this one, the eye can pick up yellowing on the, so the nicer condition emerald has yellowing. And I know, I just said the nicer condition one. That's the nicer condition one has yellowing. So again, on the other one, I guess they're about the same. Actually, I might have it backwards. I think this one's the more rough one. The nicer one is, yeah, that's a little bit nicer one. So this is, you're getting into the moderate heavy plate stuff now. That's, you got to go real deep in the cut and condition and pricing. Now this one's more slightly played. If you guys look at that, eh, that's, that's a slight play minus. You might be heading to moderate play. I mean, it's got some, I don't know, I'd almost say mod play. But the thing is, it's going to vary on opinion. I always recommend undergrading it and making it worse and protecting yourself. Because otherwise, nothing worse than having problems with that crap, I'm telling you guys. So again, these two cards are not worth the same amount of money. And it's very important to recognize that up front. Usually the more played and worn out cards have the yellowing. So that's more common. And the nicer ones usually don't. And the yellowing could be anything from cigarette smoke. It could be sun damage. It could be the environment, humidity. It could be a lot of things that cause it over the years. So those are those two, those two cards. Next. You guys ready for the next thing here? All right, here we go. Counterfeit mocks. This is not from the collection. This is from my own, from the store people have mailed me. Real mocks. So we're going to go into the emerald here. Hopefully, uh, camera keeps going here. I got a warning low battery light. That's not good. So next, we're going to look at, first of all, this is a fake. This is real. First thing I noticed, this real one is rough. So the fake one is definitely, it's it's a good fake. I'm not going to lie. It's a pretty nice fake. In person, it's actually not too bad. The back is real nice. So this remember, the more played and worn they are, the more you can hide on whether the card is real or not. So look at this thing. Oh, my God. That sucker is just... That's had some loving. She has been around the block. Oh my god. Again, it's a real mox. I mean, it passes all the tests. It's legit under magnification everything, but it is played to hell. You know, I can't offer, you know, the gentleman wants a really good, probably like light play, like slight play, near mint type pricing. There's no way. Even on the buy list, that is not or near that condition. I can't do it. And unfortunately, you know, hopefully the buyer understands that and we can go through it and make a deal, but it's just, there's just no way around it. Because on eBay and trying to sell this to people, they're going to be like, oh my god. The only people who are going to buy something like this is going to be a player, and it's going to be double sleeves in their deck. There's no real way around it. Do I want to buy it still? Of course. But the price is just, it's just going to have to be way lower. You know, I mean, the if this was a gem mint PSA 10, you're looking at a couple grand. I mean, in this condition, good lord, a couple hundred bucks. I mean, this is maybe six, five hundred range. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure. I'd have to really look up the numbers and comparables. Next, we're going to jump over. So the unlimited mox jets. 
Now these are pretty nice overall. The condition is a lot nicer. So both of these have, again, they got play. They're not near mint. These are not unplayed. This is all from a player's collection, you can tell. But again, these are very similar. No whitening, or no whitening, no yellowing. And these are a lot more consistent looking cards. Same thing, nothing crazy. I definitely would like to buy these. Now the Mox Pearl here is very nice. This one is very nice condition. You've got a few nicks on the side, but the front is very, very beautiful pearl. I mean, that is a gorgeous Mox Pearl on the front. Like I said, the back has some nicks and wear, and the corner's got a little chunk hair and everything. Again, but out of all the white watered power, that's probably going to be the nicest one in this batch. So if you guys come over here with me and take a look, I mean, you know, compared to if you put them all side by side, that pearl is definitely the nicest. The jets are probably second. The ruby and um, these emeralds are kind of on the rougher side. The ancestral still looks nice, but it does have play. So I want to go into that. So you, I got to make sure. Unfortunately, this buyer is probably going to be his the prices he gave me when he came up with that fifty thousand number for all this, you know, for everything type thing. Is the, some of the prices he used were based on near mint pricing on buy lists, like Star City Games near mint. And unfortunately, these aren't worth anywhere near that. I mean, I wish they were. I don't mind paying the premium, but you have to be able to determine sometimes when the card is just simply just the conditions not there. It's so imperative to not lose focus over the condition because you really really want the card you cannot let the emotions get involved with that so before we end this video we're going to go to the next thing i want to go to one more thing here and that is going to be oops, let's move this over hang on before we end for today i want to go over actually maybe one or two more things so today next i want to go into the blue power this is probably some of my favorite stuff i didn't really have a hard time negotiating this because i pretty much gave the asking price I was very happy about these. These are not perfect mint or anything. These still have some nicks in play where you can see on the side, but I was these are beautiful to the eye. The front is very, very nice. I was very excited when the when I saw the condition. I checked these in and I'm looking at them. I go, wow. I mean, even let's take it out of the sleeve. Let's be real careful. So when we look at this stuff, look at that surface. Beautiful card. No inking all the way around. Beautiful centering. Beautiful card. Very happy about this. I mean, if you look at it all the way around. It has a little bit of nicks here and there, but I am really, really excited about this particular card. So this is something that literally his asking price on the buy list and everything with near mint, I have no problems paying that. It's not even I'm not even going to negotiate for the gentleman. I'm I'm completely cool with it. The recall, same thing. I mean, the recall, the one bad thing it has going for it. It's got a nasty hit on the side. One we got one major nick on the side there. Besides that, the card is very, very nice. Even on the back. You've got a little play wear mark, but overall, it is a generally very, very nicely centered and a very good eye appeal besides that little guy on the side. I definitely want it. Like I said, I have no problem. His asking price is very, very fair. I have no problem on this particular card. Now, third and final, we got the Time Twister. I want to comment on this particular card mostly because of the fact it is a signed card and it's more played. So this one, I'm not going to be able to give the asking price he wants because it's not one nick on the side. There are nicks and chips all over it, and it's signed, and the back has more nicks. I don't know if you guys can see how bad it is in the, in the camera. But overall, on the front, the white is really kind of heavy on this card all the way around. Um, so this one, I can't pay the full asking he wants, so we're going to have to do a little negotiating. I'm not sure if that depends how attached he is. And remember, everybody values their card, and every card, completely different. He may value some of these a lot higher and a lot lower. Uh, final thing, I have some fake ones here I want to show you guys. So it, when you compare it, um, I want to know what you guys think. Personally, it's blatantly obvious. So when you look at the fakes on this particular model, now this is like a Gen 3 fake. This is an older fake, not super fancy, not super really good high quality. But when you look at this fake, I mean the text and everything and the coloring, it looks almost faded. It has a funny feel to it. It's just not that great. I just want to show because people always yell at me because I don't do the comparison. So I at least wanted to bring that into comparison for you guys. So that is Rudy with Alpha Investments on this video. Before I end it, like I said, that's what we're going over here. The last two boxes, I'm really not going to go much into over here because we already look, kind of glanced through these first two. The same thing, I'm going to kind of have a blanket offer to the gentleman for these type of cards, but chances are it's probably not going to go real well because I just can't simply offer a lot. I mean, the card, the dollar amount is just too low on these type of cards. So when we look at some of these things, I mean, I mean, look, there's a Chris Rush Forest. I mean, you know, it's worth a little bit of money, and some of these are great. I mean, God, look at, the, look at the signatures everywhere. You know, but again, you know, there's not a lot of money in a Dark Angel from Tempest. 
you know, some of these cards, the money's just simply not there. I mean, they're nice. They're signed. They're cool cards. There's Mirage. Huh, the bubble. I mean, I know this has spiked recently, but I still don't really want to be a part of that temporary bubble. You get revised cards. They're cool cards. They're signed. War Beast, not worth anything. I mean, you've got cards that are cool. Grinning Totem, well, that brings back memories. There's an Icy from Ice Age, you know. You got a lot of things like this. And again, they're cool cards. They're very, they have value. There's a lot of signatures. There's a lot of nostalgia and probably a lot of history with this stuff. But unfortunately for my situation and for me as a business person and a store individual and an online seller, for me to flip and sell some of these cards, you know, it's just not going to happen. They're signed. They're nice. But I'm not going to be able to offer next to anything on a lot of this stuff. I mean, a Chronicles, I mean, that's pennies. These are penny cards. And, you know, if I tell them zero on everything, it's probably just not going to be a very positive conversation, you know. Bloodlust, what was that, fourth edition? Not worth anything. But if it's in Legends, it's worth four or five bucks. So, a lot of little things. I think that's why a lot of people who get involved in these collection things may not make a lot of money or may not be happy with it. There's a beta sign Hill Giant, you know, beta Earth Elemental. Sign, pretty heavy wear on there. But, you know, look, Homelands and Volcanic, there's a Portal, there's the Dark, there's Urza Saga, there's a Tempest, Sign Mirage, you got Legend Sign, Visions, and Unsign. I mean, it goes on and on. I mean, it's so it's just one of those things where I just want to emphasize to everybody else, you must be very careful. You cannot evaluate a collection that's worth, you know, like all these boxes I'm showing you right now, if you sum it all up, I'm sure these are worth a good amount of money. It's probably worth easily, I would guess, honestly... Without finishing and going through every single thing with you guys and boring you to death, let's look at one more chunk from this box just to kind of give you guys an idea. I mean, look, hey, look, there's a pithing needle. Flusterstorm, isn't that like 70 bucks now? I mean, you've got a lot of these things. I mean, holy smokes. Look at the, you got new stuff. Look at the Thought Knots, brand new cards, Reality Smasters, Whiteboard, Skeleon, Steel. I mean, Endbringers, Oblivion, Drowners. I mean, there's another Null Rod. There's a lot of stuff in here, but again, even let's pretend let's say all these cards in these four boxes let's say they are actually worth all this stuff combined is worth let's say five six grand okay the problem is we can't pay five six grand i can't even pay three four grand i'd struggle because of the fact there's such a low dollar cards my market online everything is going to struggle to get the transactions so rudy with alpha investments on part two i want to share this the next video is pretty much going to be the final thing i'm going to go over some a few more things and then I'm going to show you what the official number is, which ones are getting sent back to the buyer, the seller. I'm sorry, wait, yeah, whoever's getting his cards back. And then I'm going to show you the ones I'm going to buy and what I paid. And we're going to close it out. Like I said, it's just a long, detailed thing. And I don't want to make one video that's like an hour and a half long. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. Give me more comments and feedback so I can actually put that's the, the updated feedback, what you guys think in the next round of this. And uh, round three coming tomorrow. Hope you guys are having fun like I am. Like I said, it's a labor of love. You have to love doing this stuff to be successful. You guys have